Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at an awesome add-on that allows us to wrap cloth, ropes or even chain around an object to create a really nice effect. So we're having a look at this add-on called Wrap Master. It comes from Nodes Interactive and it comes at what I think is quite a reasonable price of $12 if you're going to be using this a lot or it's just going to make your life a lot quicker and easier. And this does really save you a lot of time. So I've very quickly made this rudimentary wooden staff and we're going to add a wrap around it. We're going to have a look at some of the major settings and how you set this up and do this, but I'm also going to have a look at how we can make this 3D printable because it won't create a mesh that's perfectly 3D printable, but it's a very, very quick change to be able to make this work for 3D printing, which is really nice to be able to do. So. The first thing you do is once you've downloaded it, you add it to your asset browser. There's a link in the description about using the asset browser if you're not sure how to do that, but effectively you just save it to a specific file you've set up. And that means when you come into your asset browser, you'll find in your unassigned items, I've got some other stuff as well, but these wrap master options. And I'm going to go to the standard cloth one because I think it's what most people are going to be using to begin with. Now this is going to come in quite small. Let's just get this out of the way for me. So I'm just going to S to scale this up till I get it to approximately the right size for this. That's way too big. So let's just scale that down slightly. And then I'm just going to put it generally in very, very loose place. It's not going to be where this is going to end up. So let's put that somewhere about there. Now this is made up of three items. We have our wrap itself, and then we have this width and this pinch and it's called Collider Pinch and Collider Width. I'm gonna hide those for now, but we will come back to them at the end because they do some quite cool things. And then we can just carry on moving this around. And importantly, we can then go into Edit Mode, so let's go into Edge Mode, to set this up. Now I'm just going to, let's select those, and then move those to here. Oh, I've got that turned on, so let's get rid of that. And the important thing here is to make sure that everything is on the outside of your mesh. Nothing should be going into it. And if you need to, this is not a problem here, but I could just put in an edge here and then G and move that around if I need to make this follow my mesh a little bit better and be on the outside. I'm actually going to select those and bring those down slightly. And once we're done with that, we can come into our modifier panel here and this gives us all the options, and there are a lot of options. You get a lot of customizability with this, which is really cool. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to talk about what these do here, and then we'll talk about everything else. Now, you can actually come straight down and start snapping this, but do note that when you do it, it's gonna start slowing down your computer slightly. In fact, actually, let's do that first. So what we do is we come to Snap Surface, click the pipette, and then click on our object and then click snap and it is now snapped to our object. Really easy to do. We can then come up to our length and we can start increasing the length if we want or we can start increasing the turn. So notice this increases the length of our cloth but it will constantly stay to that point. If I then start changing the turns, it's still going down to the same point. It's just adding more turns. So in essence, that's sort of making the cloth look longer. But you get the idea. This makes it easier to set up. I want it down to that point so I can do the length and then do the turns and it will still come down to that point there. So it's useful to not have it constantly changing everything. You can also change the width, which will change the width of your cloth if you want to and you can change the thickness and that's how far it will come out. And I want this relatively thick because this is gonna be 3D printing, so I need to make it a little bit more obvious. The other thing that we can do, I should have mentioned this when we did this, is the snap to surface also has an offset feature, so we can do that as well. Now it's worth noting that you can't drag it to a minus number, but you can type a minus number in and then be able to drag from that point. I like it having a minus of let's say minus 0.001 just so it's slightly on the inside because again I'm going to be 3D printing this and I need it to have a little bit of overlap. So now we've got our wrap, let's just increase our length slightly because it will give a nice demonstration of a point later so let's put that to about there. So that's our end piece and then we can fiddle with our other settings as well. Now I'm just gonna turn on my wireframe so we can see what this looks like, so we can talk about the geometry. So we've got a subdivision surface working on this, and we also have this bit called LDIV. Now LDIV 
just works on how many edges there are or vertices there are over the length of this. So you can see I can change that. Obviously we need to have a certain amount, don't go too low. Whereas the subdivision acts as a normal subdivision so it works in all dimensions. So we can make everything a little bit more detailed there. Let's just turn off our wireframe. We can also adjust our layers. This is a really useful setting. So for example, that's looking a little bit tight there. So I could have my overlap push being a bit greater and then you can fiddle around with how smooth you want that to be. So you can have quite a sharp change. I don't like that, I want that smoothed out more. Okay, and you can have your layers push out more a little bit as well. So notice that increases the gap between each of the layers. So you can make that more or less extreme. Let's just smooth that out a bit more. The other thing is this tuck end, which I really like. I don't want this bit loose and flapping around because realistically it shouldn't just magically stay there. It would be loose and draping. So I actually want to tuck that in. So if I just drag that, I can just tuck this in to the point where that looks like it would work better. It's just going to make a neater end to this wrap. We can also affect our noise. So this is fairly uniform. We can increase that so it's a little bit more random. You can see what we're doing here in terms of how random the spacing is apart. And as soon as you've got some noise, you can start changing the frequency and things like that. Do note that this will have an effect on where not the end point is, but the other layers. So if you have tucked this in, you might want to do this bit first and then fiddle around with the length to make sure that it's going into somewhere where it can tuck in. So for example, I could change that to, let's go there-ish, okay? So you can do whatever you want with that, but this noise to make it less uniform is really handy. Let's just put that back to where it was, there we go. So they're the major settings that I will probably play around with. Do note at any point you can come in and edit this. I can go into edge mode and G and move these up if I want to. So you can change what you're doing and it will work with you live. The other thing we have, in fact, actually let's miss out these two because we'll come back to them, is our tear feature. Now this will add little rips to our cloth, which is really cool. Now. Oddly, it, this has got a sparsity index. I'm guessing this is the way nodes have to be set up. So basically the higher the number, the less tears there are, which feels a little bit odd, but that's the way it works. Do note that this isn't just a textural thing. If we go into our wireframe, we can see that this is actually being created as geometry, which is really helpful again for 3D printing. The only thing I'll say with this, which I wish could be a little different, is you don't have any randomness in how deep the tears are. They're all quite uniform. So a slight annoyance there, but still really, really good to have that as an option. But I'd generally put the sparsities relatively low so that you don't see too many next to each other and realize that they're all the same length. Let's turn that off. So let's have a look at these colliders, which we hid earlier. And these add some really nice functions. So I'll bring back our pinch collider, and we just need to drag that here to the point where it's around our mesh. And if we come back to our mesh, I'm just gonna pin that so we can keep it there, and then go to our pinch collider and turn that on. You'll notice it starts to pinch our material together. So this would be like, say this is a bandage, and you've got it more wrapped around one place, you can do that. And if we up our length, this will start to become a little bit more obvious. Or we could add in some more turns. The other thing we can do is that if we go into vertex mode or edge mode, you can shift and D and duplicate this and have this affecting two different places at the same time. This does need to be in one object because this is obviously working off of a collider object. So you can't duplicate this outside. If I did this here, it will have no effect. So you need to duplicate it inside. Let's just turn that off and we can delete that as well. The other one that we've got is a width collider and that will change the width. So for example, if you wanted the bandages to be thicker in the center, you can turn this on. So let's just go there. And then it has made it thicker at this point. And again, you can move this up and down and it'll work in real time to change the thickness at that point. And you can make this more extreme or less extreme. And the influence will affect how far it has an effect for. So another nice little function there. 
So this is everything we've got here. There are some other things. I should mention the materials, even though it's something I don't really care about. If we come into the materials tab, you'll notice this already has materials applied to it, which is really cool. So it looks actually like a wrap and you can do things to affect your materials. For example, you can change them or come into your materials tab should you choose to, if that's something that interests you. Now, the bit that interests me is this being able to be 3D printed. Now, if I come here and apply this, you will notice, if you go into vertex mode, that this has not created a 3D printable object. It is basically overlapping in terms of the edges. It is going to cause us some problems. So we don't want to do that. However, because this is a geometry node setup, we can come in and look at and edit this geometry node setup. Now, this is gonna look fairly intimidating if I come into this. So let's come into our geometry node editor and we can't really see it annoyingly. I think they've hidden it on purpose a little bit, but if you just press A and then the full stop on your number pad, you'll find where this is and you can see this geometry node set up here with all of our inputs and where they go. And interestingly, if we come here and then press tab, you can actually see the whole of this setup. And yeah, I'm not even gonna get into that because there's a lot to it. So I'm just gonna tab out of that. But hopefully, the only thing that we need to do to make this 3D printable is add something in here. So at the moment, it's not 3D printable because the mesh is overlapping. If we just control an A and type in Boolean, and we want a mesh Boolean here, and then we're gonna go to intersection, and we're gonna click self intersect. So I like to set this up when it's not in the node group. And then I'm just gonna drag it in to that line between the wrap master main and the group output and that is gonna do its work. Now, depending on your computer, this could take a bit of time. Mine did this fairly quickly because this node setup seems to be quite efficient in the way that it works. And if I've done that, now we can apply it. And if we go into edit mode, we can see that it is actually booleaned everything together really nicely. So this is one mesh. It is not gonna have any problems with printing. If I just N 3D toolbox and check all, it will have some zero faces because there's going to be some small faces, some non-flat faces. They're not really a problem. Importantly, we've got no non-manifold edges or bad contiguous edges. So this will be perfectly 3D printable at this point, which means that you're good to go. I should also mention again, that there are other things we can do with this. There are setups for ropes, though the rope is just a texture. So this is you can create a cylinder wrapping around your object, but that can be really useful as well anyway. But we can also create these really nice chains, which give a really fantastic effect. And it's a very quick way of not having to set up all of those modifiers yourself and having something that will be really quick and efficient. If you are interested in this add-on, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link, which means it's gonna cost you no extra to use, but it's gonna give a little bit of money towards the channel, which is always really appreciated. If you did enjoy this video or you think this add-on is useful, please do hit the like button so other people can see it more easily on YouTube. And if you really want to go a bit further to support the channel, you're welcome to join the Patreon, where you get these videos a week early, ad-free, and other great stuff as well. Have a great day, guys.